Hello lovely people, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are. It's Ila here, Saturday Night's Teaching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is a video to show you how I made this wonderful dress from Berda to 2021 number 101, which I have made before. For references, this is what it looks like in the magazine. I've made it before in a Ryan chalice, and this time I'll be making it in a cotton poplin. So it presents something completely different and unique. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, do consider to subscribe. I love sewing and put out sewing content. And remember to like this video, it really supports the channel. So let's get into actually sewing this particular dress. So today we're going to be making dress number 2, 2021. 20, number 101 top in a size 38 and I'm going to be making it in this angles fabric and it's a lovely lovely cotton sewing pattern has already been traced and I've added seam allowances to the sewing pattern now because art gallery fabrics are really quite narrow I can only get one pattern piece on each. Consequently, there wasn't enough fabric for me to also put the tie belts and the cuff. So I'm gonna be making them in this black contrasting uh, fabric, which I think looks quite nice like that. If you wanna make things a little bit easier for yourself, when you trace out, make sure that you're writing these little notes like this is the section that you're going to attach to the bodice and also make sure that you write your seam numbers this will be very very useful for you to know where to attach what you need to attach seam number five and neck so you want to make sure that you're doing that <laughs> adding pockets so I've cut out these pocket pattern pieces from this template that I have which I make to fit my hand and my phone my pocket placement is about two inches down from here but you want to check what suits for you and I've notched it so I'll be sewing on the pocket pattern piece over there I've done double cutting here I've cut out the black so this is the belt pattern piece in black and this is the cuff pattern piece and it's in black. There is a front facing piece and you can go ahead and use this, but I am going to use, I'll be using bias binding uh, for the neckline. Because I just like how it feels, it's nice and smooth and it creates a really smooth finish. The first thing that I'm going to do is to prep the pocket pattern pieces. And I'm just going to overlock them all on the curved edge. Next thing that I do is I'm going to take the pocket pieces and I'm going to attach them to the skirt pattern pieces which I decided to cut on the fold. If you have decided to actually have seams down the center front and the center back then you're going to go ahead and sew those up first. So I am just going to find where I notched, use my wonder clips and And then I'm going to sew in here.
The next thing that we have to work on is the body's back. I've got the seam allowances along the center back, which I am going to sew first, finish with the overlocker, and then press to one side. Once that has been done, I will then stay stitch the neckline. I'm just going to give you a bit of a thing on this. So this is the front pattern piece, which looks really thin, but this is the bit that's going to tie. You sew the ties on here. And this is the bit that gets attached to the body, says into the skirt itself. Yep. And that's going to be your neckline. Okay. And this is going to be the center front. So what this looks like is it will go like this. Okay. I'll go like that with this being the tie and then this is the bit that you're going to attach to the skirt here okay here that's going to be like that and that's the sleeve okay so let's see it's like that So, key things to make a note of is your neck line over there and the section that you're going to attach to the bodice. Now that we've covered that, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stay stitch this neckline here just so that it doesn't gape. So, we're going to stay stitch the neckline first. Okay, now that the neckline has been stay stitched, as you can see over there, we're going to sew this down. This is your center front uh, bodice piece. So we're going to sew it down, overlock, overlock these edges here. Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> looking back at it, we've uh, stay stitched the neckline here, and then we've overlocked the center front uh, seam. So now we're going to sew up this center front. Once again, just to show you, so we're going to sew down here and then we'll press it open okay then now that we've sewn that we're going to press it open neckline center front and then this is the bit where the tie belts are going to go it is going to look a little bit weird that's the neck, that's the center front, and this is going to be the tie belt thingy, and this is your sleeve, and this is the under sleeve area, and this is the bit that's going to connect to the skirt. Yeah, follow me. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to sew the rest of the bands. In my case, I'm using the black, so I'm going to be sewing these on. So this is what it's going to look like with those added on, and those are going to do that. Okay, so we're going to sew that on and press it. And we're just going to press this and press it towards the that side there. And... Ooh, it's gonna look nice. Okay, so center front here. That's the center front, yeah. Okay. So we're going to take this and then we're going to fold it. it keeps moving about. We're going to fold it like so. Okay. And fold it up. Okay. 
Okay. Do you see that? So you fold it and then we're going to sew along here all the way down to the end of the tie belt. And what you end up having is this, right? Like that. And then you're going to have to pull this through. Yep. So we're going to sew from here around all the way down. Okay? So this is what we have here. We've sewn this together and this has been nipped. And when you look at it in the front, what you're going to have is this. So that's the neckline. This is your shoulder seam. That's the sleeve and that's the end of it. And so now we have to bring this through here you have to basically pull this out and then we'll press it Okay, so here's what we have once everything has been pulled out. And so the idea is that this is the belt that you then wrap around um, here. But this is effectively what it's going to look like. And so you have this straight onto the skirt. So now the thing is I have to press. We're going to go and press this now. Okay, so you have it laid out like this, and then just um, give it a press. Okay, so we're going to have this little bit of thingy here. We're just going to cut that. Let's try and have a straight line, but our top is made. So this is what the top is going to be like. This is your neck over here. These are going to be your sleeves, right? And this is going to be the dumajigi that you use. <laughs> to tie up like that. So that's the front and this is the back. So I can show you this. Going to do that. And that. And then we're going to sew. Just along here. Okay. Now, because my back is cut on the bias, so you'll see that it's stretching out a lot more because it's on the bias. This one was on the straight grain, so it doesn't have as much. So I'm going to do it so that the back pattern piece is going to be against the feed dogs because bias cut 
will stretch out more so the feed dog will help to feed it so that it's going at an equivalent rate and that way I won't end up with a situation where you get to the end of the seam and you've got that happening so just a little top tip from me I went ahead and I finished the uh, shoulder seam and I'm going to press it and I'm going to press it towards the back. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that's our lovely neckline here. And now we're just going to do the bias binding on it. I like to use a satin bias binding because satin just feels really much smoother against the skin and I find that because it is polyester, it's made out of a polyester, it doesn't shrink or change qualities um, even after it's been washed because sometimes with the cotton bias bindings I find that they then tend to shrink and they create like a rumpled look. So this is the one that I'm going to be using and it's in a dark grey. When I uh, sew my bias binding on, I don't actually pin it on. I'm just going to show you what I do. The first thing that I'm going to do is I will use the stay stitch lining to line up, sorry, the stay stitching line here to line up the first crease on there like this. And then I'll just stitch this along here. And then once that's stitched on, I'll then press it out like this and then under like so. And I'll probably fold it under like this. And then I'll stitch this down all around. But I do this all without using a pin. Um, yeah. And so I'll start. I'm going to start on here and go round and finish on here. So when I start on here, I make sure to leave about an inch of bias binding there. And that will help me to create the finish when I come around to the other side. So I start off here and I have it lined up like that. And I'm gonna place this underneath the needle underneath the machine like this and then I'll sew all the way around okay so yeah I don't know if you can see but this bit is sewn down and just gonna keep on So I'm coming back down to the other side of the V-point and I'll just make sure to put this out of the way like so and then I'll try and finish it off here where they meet and then I'll cut, I'll give an extra inch from where the last stitch is to where I cut it off but you'll notice that when I do it I only cut it off after I've finished sewing it. I find it's more efficient that way. Okay, here's what this looks like now with this sewn on. So the next thing I'm going to use is Taylor's ham here and I'm going to press this under. Um, yeah, not really. It would look nice, wouldn't it, if I, if I had a little bit of a trim on the neckline. Just thinking this might look quite nice. Let's have a try of that. I'm going to use a uh, pinking shears to trim off the seam allowance at the neckline. Okay, here we go. It's been sheared off now. So I'm actually going to see. 
so this has been pressed so now I'm gonna fold it under like that to encase the raw edge and I'll see what this looks like I think I like it so I'm trying to get an idea of whether this might look good so I'm gonna have black cuffs so I'm wondering if that's gonna work with the gray neck it's a bit too much like a pajama I think <laughs> I think I'll just cover this over. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if I put the gray trim, it will make it look too pyjamery. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So this is what I'm now doing. I'm just going to press the bias binding along so that I'll then sew it down. Okay, before I start sewing... I have to decide what I'm going to do with this, right? So a simple way is just to sew it so that uh, these get tucked under. And you sort of like tuck these under and make it look neat. Or try and have some sort of a fancy uh, finish here. But I've never been quite successful with trying to do a perfect straight down mitered join here so i tend to just go for the simpler version of i will finish off one side right and then i'll cut off what i need to cut off and then with the other one on the top i'll then just tuck it under nicely and neatly and then sew um, over it and then i'll use some hand stitching to finish off the bits that i don't want to show through on the front Okay, so this is the first part of it done. I've tucked this bit underneath and now I just have to cut that over there. Okay, so that's that done now and I'm just going to hand baste it down so that it doesn't move when I do the sewing around the neck. In order to have a really nice finish, I'm going to do some basting around here before I stitch it down. So I'm sewing it down and I'm going to baste it and that's because it makes it easier to sew down the bias binding. Now some of you may be thinking oh why not just do a facing you know because there's actually uh, pattern pieces for a facing the original pattern itself comes with a facing. But I have a love-hate relationship with facings, right? I find that they tend to flap around <laughs> quite a lot. And even when you do sew them down on the seams and whatever, unless they're stitched down completely around, I tend to find that there's always some flapping around. So where possible... I generally prefer, if I can, to use bias binding. And satin bias binding feels so nice against the skin. So that's my reason for why I do take this extra time to do a bias binding finish where I can because um, I don't like the facing flap. I don't like it, me. But it's just a basting stitch, so really wide uh, stitches just to hold it down so that when I sew it, I can have the satin bias binding against the feed dogs and I'm doing the top stitching along here. Right, so here we go. You see that? So this is basted down and now I'm just going to sew it over and uh, there we go. Lovely neckline done. Nice smooth setting finish against my neck. So, <laughs> hey, there we go. Now it's finished now. And it just needs a bit of a press. But I'm beginning to think that this looks like hospital scrubs. <laughs> the way that I've done the neckline. Uh, we're going to have to see. But um, here we go. Let's give it a nice press. Okay, it's beginning to look a lot like a uh, dress now. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do those underarm 
seams we're going to sew them up overlock the edges clip in this curved notch this curved bit here so that you've got a bit more movement okay so that's done overlocked and then we've just notched so that this curve here has got a bit of movement unless you're somebody who doesn't raise up your arms and so you don't have to worry about it too much but i tend to use my arms quite a lot so i need this to be able to move as much as possible right we have a bodies ladies and gents oh look at that it's coming along we're nearly done now okay so we're at this point now where we have the bodice is all together it is all sorted it is looking gorgeous and it's that point that i begin to get a little bit too excited and i have to be mindful to slow down because a lot of my mistakes they happen when i'm excited about finishing the dress and wearing it which i'm getting to i'm getting that little you know that little warmth that little jiggle that little frisson of excitement when you begin to see the vision come together so you do have the choice of not adding the cuffs if you don't like cuffs, but I'm a cuff person. I love cuffs. I have a tutorial on how to do cuffs because I just think that there's just something so sassy and cute about a cuff. And so if you're going to skip the cuff option, maybe because you don't like cuffs, although I don't understand why you wouldn't like cuffs. Let me know in the comments down below if you don't like cuffs. Actually, I'm quite curious if there's anybody out there who doesn't like it so that I will know for any video that has got cuffs and I'll just skip the point where I talk about skipping the cuffs. <laughs> uh, so you can just hem this and tra la 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 la, you'll have the top and then you can just connect it to the skirt. Don't forget, we still have the skirt portion to connect to. But for now, we're gonna be adding these fabulous cuffs here. It's a shame I don't have a print fabric that sort of goes with this, but we're just going to have to go with the plain one. Right, so I should take this moment to note that I'm not actually following the instructions on Berta exactly, word for I'm just kind of doing what makes sense for me and how I put this together. So in that regards, I should probably have put this at the beginning to say that watch this through. <laughs> so for the cuff, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this to turn it into a tube. So I'm gonna use my seam allowance and sew this down, press it open and then fold it under. Yeah, pressed open, okay. And I'm gonna do that. Just like so. So if you're going to go with the cuff or a contrast cuff, you have the option of actually making it wider if you want to. Just like steam, steam, steam. <laughs> okay, we have a little cuff. Now let's go attach it. Okay, I'm just going to walk you through how I actually do this, right? So I take the cuff. I don't know, I think it might be the same in the bird instructions. I don't know, I have the German issue. My German is not very fluent, so I'm not too sure. But I am going to put the cuff inside the sleeve like that. And obviously we want to match the seam with the underarm seam, like so. Yep. And I'm just going to... Sew this on all together, right? And then once it's sewn, it will come out like that. And then I'll put it out like that. It will make sense when I show you. <laughs> but for now, uh, we're putting this inside the sleeve. So we've got the right side out. And this one's over there. Okay, so da -da -da -da, this is what we got. So this is your bodice. So we're just gonna pull this one out like a so. Right? Press this towards the cuff. You can grade the seam allowances if you want to. 
but I'm not gonna because I like it to have some heft. I like it to be able to stand on its own. And then we're going to uh, turn it under. Like so. And then we'll press and then we'll top stitch along here to create the cuff. Just like that. Very simple. So when you turn it, you want to make sure that you're favoring um, this so that you've got like a little bit of a band over here. Tra la 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 la. You know why I'm doing Captain Underpants thing? Oh, I can't wait. Right, let's go do this. And here we go. Beautiful cuff uh, ready to go. So just going to do the other side now and uh, tra la. Okay. Cuffs are both in. The bodice is complete. Now we're going to finish off the skirt and then attach it to the bodice. So if you remember, I added pockets because pockets are everything. And I'm just going to sew and press. Okay. This has been sewn up now. While I'm at it, before I join up the waist of the skirt to the bodice, I'm actually just going to finish um, the hem with the overlocker. And while I'm at it, I'm also just going to go ahead and hem this. So I traced this out with a one inch hem because I knew that I was sewing it out of cotton. And I think that a one inch hem looks nice with something as stable as cotton. So. so we now come to the most important moment, which is the joining of the bodice and the skirt in holy matrimony. And what we sew together may no seem reaper put apart. Yeah, so simple, straightforward. That's just going to get sewn on and then finished with an overlocker and then that's it, it is done. Okay, gonna look something like this. And then we're gonna sew that waist uh, down. Just overlocked the waist seam. That's my favorite part when you reach inside and <laughs> now it probably doesn't look like much. That is the nature of this dress. It, it it doesn't look very appealing when it's not on, but once it's on and it's tied up, it is gonna look fabulous. Now you're just gonna have to wait for me to source out clean up in here tidy it up reset the sewing room ready for the next project after this one before i'll show you how i look in 